Hi, my name's Pete, and I'm the Head of Communications and Engagement at the Scottish Wildlife Trust. Last weekend, my family and I were down at the beach at Coldingham Bay on the Berwickshire coast, and my two-year-old son was digging in the sand when he found this. But what is it? Let's take a closer look. Many of you might recognise this as a mermaid's purse. You may have even found one yourself on the beach at some point. But have you ever wondered what it actually is? The term mermaid's purse might conjure up a fantastic image of a mermaid using this to keep her cowrie shells safe. But I think the real origin of this is even more fascinating because this once housed the embryo of one of our ocean's top predators. That's right. Mermaid's purses are actually the egg cases of sharks and their relatives, the skates. Now together, sharks and skates, along with rays, form a group called the elasmobranchs. Elasmobranchs are still fish, but they differ from other fish because rather than having a skeleton made of bone like we do, their skeleton is made of cartilage. Globally, there are around 1300 species of sharks, skates and rays, and over 30 of these we find in Scotland's waters. Probably the most common species in Scottish seas is the small spotted cat shark, which grows to about a metre long and can be found in coastal waters all around the coast of Britain, down to around 100 metres deep. If you haven't heard of a small spotted cat shark, maybe you've heard of a lesser spotted dogfish, or a sandy dogfish, or maybe a rough hound or a rock salmon, or maybe even a morgay. Confusingly, these are all different common names for exactly the same species. Another shark that we see relatively frequently in Scotland seas is the mighty basking shark, which, at up to 10 metres long and weighing in at around 4 metric tonnes, is the second largest fish in the world. These gentle giants feed on microscopic plankton and migrate to the rich waters off the west coast of Scotland each summer, having swam from as far away as the Canary Islands. But basking sharks aren't the only record-holding or migratory sharks that have been seen in Scotland's seas. Blue sharks make huge transatlantic migrations of over 5,000 miles, again visiting UK waters in the summer months. And, whilst rare, shortfin mako sharks have also been recorded in our waters. Shortfin makos are the fastest shark in the world, having been recorded to reach speeds of almost 50 miles an hour. There are also a number of different skate and ray species in our waters. These include thornback rays, which tend to bury themselves in the sand during the day, but come out at night to prey on crabs and lobsters. And the flapper skate, which was once common around Britain, but is now unfortunately considered critically endangered. But back to my egg case. Which species does this come from? Well, fortunately for us, not all species of elasmobranch lay eggs. And in fact, there are three different types of reproduction in the sharks, skates and rays. The first of these is oviparity, which are our egg-laying species. In oviparous species, the embryo develops inside an egg where it feeds on the yolk of the egg for nutrients. Unlike the eggs of birds, which are all a relatively similar shape, the eggs of sharks and skates come in a wide range of different shapes. Some have horns, some have long tendrils, and some species, such as the Port Jackson shark that lives off Australia, have a corkscrew-shaped egg case. Oviparous species in the UK include the small spotted cat shark, the thornback ray, and the flapper skate. The second type of reproduction is ovoviviparity. In these species, embryos also develop within an egg case, but rather than the female laying the eggs, she retains them, and the pups develop inside the egg case whilst still inside the female. As with oviparous species, the developing embryos are fed by the yolk inside the egg case and, when they're ready, they will hatch out of the eggs whilst still inside their mother. In some species, the mother will then immediately give birth to the pups as live young. But in other species, the pups will actually stay inside the mother for a little bit longer and feed off any unfertilised eggs that are within the uterus. The final type of reproduction is viviparity. And in these species, developing pups are nourished directly from the mother via an umbilical cord, similar to in humans and most other mammals. And the pups are then born live. So because not all sharks, skates and rays lay eggs, we can rule out some of the species that we find around Scotland. 
and that leaves around about a dozen species which my egg case could be from. Now, as I mentioned earlier, different species of shark skates and rays produce eggs of different shapes and sizes. And the first thing to look for if you're trying to identify an egg case is whether it has curly tendrils or pointed horns. If it has curly tendrils like these ones do, it will be from a type of cat shark. But if it has pointed horns like this one on the left, it will be from a species of skate. Whilst well, not very long, you can clearly see that my egg case has curly tendrils. So we know that that means that this was produced by a species of cat shark. Now in Scotland, there are three different species of cat shark. They are the nurse hound, the small spotted cat shark, and the blackmouth cat shark. The last of these, the blackmouth cat shark, is a deep water species. Their egg cases very rarely get washed ashore. And the cases from this species are small, measuring about five centimetres in length. The nurse hound is more common in shallower waters, and their egg cases wash up slightly more frequently. But their egg cases are large, typically 10 to 12 centimetres in length. Small spotted cat sharks, which remember are the most common shark in British waters, have egg cases measuring around five to seven centimetres. So a quick measurement of my egg case reveals the answer. This egg case is around five and a half centimetres long, so all things considered, we can be fairly confident that this is the egg from a small spotted cat shark. Now, one last thing that I wanted to show you on this egg case is that towards the top, you can see a tear. And from that tear, we can be relatively safe to assume that the shark pup that this case housed hatched out of the case as a little 10 centimetre long cat shark. What an incredible thought it is that that very shark pup might still be swimming around off the Berwickshire coast as we speak. Now that we've identified the case, there's one thing left to do, and that's to submit a record of the egg case into the Shark Trust's egg case hunt database. And that can be done either through their website or through their app. Submitting records like this helps the Shark Trust to build an important national picture of where different species of egg laying sharks are occurring and it's really quick and simple to do. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about some of Scotland's sharks, skates and rays. These misunderstood animals are often portrayed very negatively in the media, but as well as being an integral part of the marine ecosystem, I hope you'll agree that they have pretty fascinating lives. So next time you're on the beach, remember to take a walk along the strand line. You never know what you might find. <laughs>